Joining the show tonight, a crucial part of the Titans' win over Platteville. He is now the all-time receptions leader at UW Oshkosh. Trey Teslev, what's going on, man? Excited to be on here. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Talk about a long time coming. You're a guy that obviously I've followed uh, with this team, but uh, feels like this is potentially one of the best times to get you on. You're coming off a massive achievement like that. 12 catches, 152 yards to go with that. Talk about how special that is as a whole to kind of encapsulate your time down there at Oshkosh. The season's not over yet, so we're not talking retroactively. Still a lot on the table for you guys, but uh, talk about how special that is, man, and kind of a full circle moment for you. Yeah, man, it's it's awesome. It, it's, it was a goal of mine ever since committing here. Um, so to be able to achieve it, and especially at Titan Stadium in front of friends and family and, you know, my teammates and stuff like that is – it is truly special and uh it's it's cool because we also won on top of it but um got to keep going now but I, there's there's so many people to thank like i end up forgetting yep. people but like the offensive line is just did a great job and some of those guys i've played with for three four years now so it's the record says my name on it but at the end of the day like it's on the quarterbacks on the line you know it's on the other receivers as well and i was also fortunate enough to play with kobe berghammer so like that helped oh, a yeah. little bit so <laughs> Yeah, that dude was uh, – he was something else. And um, yeah. I had the privilege of, of seeing him in person up at the Dome, yeah. right? And and you guys yeah. looked pretty damn good that day and on and many others, and he was a big part of that. But uh, there are other pieces of that, you know, th- these teams over the years that have had a lot more than that. Obviously, he was the, the driving factor of that offense. But um, let's talk about this squad a bit in general. Yeah. You guys right now, the most ranked wins out of anyone in the country. That is, is a statistic, excuse me, that feels – really relevant and really awesome. What has this team gone through in the first four weeks of the season? What have you learned about this squad through some of those big time wins? Yeah, not, not gonna lie. When, when we first saw the schedule release in the off season, it's like, you see all those ranked teams and yeah. you're like, here we go. We just lost a four year started at quarterback. And we're going to jump right into, you know, mm-hmm. playing these top dogs. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm extremely happy we played them now, obviously, that we got some wins under our belt. But we learned early on who we are as a team and, you know, what we got to improve on. And uh, it's it's not the easiest thing with an 18-year-old quarterback to be able to win those games and play against tough competition. So it's it's a learning moment for everyone. And I'm happy that we we're able to pull out some wins. 100%. Dude. You look at the schedule, and there were a lot of people, myself yeah. included, that you look at those first two games, right? Yeah. Wheaton, Linfield, and you're like, yeah, you know, they'd be, it'd be great to come out of there with one win, right? To come out of there and beat one of those two teams, like you talked about, with right. a team that, you know, you return, I believe it was like five all conference selections, almost 40 letter winners. Like you return a good amount of guys and pieces that were coming back, but there were a few at key positions that, you know, right. there were some question marks around this team and this offense, particularly. So I know looking at the season beforehand, yeah, they'd be, not lucky, but they'd be, you know, in a really good spot to come out of that with one win. You went and won both. And I think yeah. that's really fortunate for you guys to be in a place where you have these learning moments in the first couple of weeks of the season against solid competition. Most teams have those, and they have to learn from a loss. You get yeah. to learn from two quality wins. And I think that is obviously a huge piece for you guys. So Wheaton week one, Linfield the week after that, how did that uh, build you guys up for some tough YAC play? Wyack played, excuse me. Yeah. Um... It did a great job of, of building us up and getting us more team chemistry. But like for us seniors, especially, we just focus on week to week because you never know when your season's going to end, whether it be, you know, one game or, or 10 games. But um, I think that attitude really helped us with uh, obviously being weed in the first game. And then, you know, the second game, it's like, here we go. This is the most important game because it's this game. So we win those two. And we're like, the WIAC is just as tough as some of these teams we're playing. So now let's put the, you know, the gas down and let's go. So. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You guys are obviously rolling yeah. right now and still some some big ones on the schedule as the WIAC continues to cannibalize itself is probably the best yeah. word. You guys right. just beat the shit out of each other all year and <laughs> make sure that maybe only one team gets into the playoffs. I mean, yeah. good God. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy it's unbelievable and, and, and prepping for the games too it's it's there's really no off week right like no. some conferences it's like oh this week we get to you know maybe lay off a little bit there's truly no off week we just saw a couple of weeks ago like stouts beating whitewater and it's yeah. like <laughs> like that's you can't take any team lightly at this point so 100 percent, man and uh, this is year three under coach jennings correct yeah. Yep. Okay. What has become more clear as he continues to lead this program, and and what have you learned? And I guess 
seen from the foundations that he's starting to set with this squad kind of under his leadership? Yeah, I think like one of the biggest ones for me, especially is, is the trust. Like I've had so many meetings with him and like just talking one-on-one -on -one, and he doesn't, he won't say something to me one-on-one -on -one that he's not considered the rest of the team. And he truly means everything he says. So at the end of the day, like when we're in a game and we need points on the board and we look over at him, it's, we, he has a look in his eye of just, we trust one another, the whole team trusts him and it's, let's just, it's time to go. And um, Oshkosh has always had a strong brotherhood here. And when he came in, he has done a great job of keeping it and not like trying to overstep anywhere or anything. And yeah. I think we, build it up better than ever before like against lacrosse when we're down i think it was like 30 to 14 at halftime and we went in the locker room and he didn't say a single word all the seniors some seniors stuck up or stood up and started talking we all just kind of looked each other in the eye and said let's let's do this thing our staff trusts us and we trust each other and you know we were able to pull it out that day so yeah and that's a fine line when you talk about the old with the new and, and maybe an, an yeah. example of that is um is it mayo right now the head coach of the patriots right yeah, yeah. And, and he comes in and he tears everything down. I mean, like yeah. literally, literally and figuratively tears everything down. The Patriot way is being stripped from the walls. And like, I'm not a Patriots fan, but I understand that they did a lot of really successful stuff over there yeah, in that facility, in that building. And, and to come in and, and take all of that down and to stamp it that this is a brand new team, a brand new culture, sometimes mm -hmm. is not the way to go. And right. I think the, the best coaches have that combination and that, they understand the expectations of any, you know, potentially great teams before them. Join with the fact that obviously a new staff is going to come in and have maybe some different kind of foundations that they want to lay for this particular team. But uh, like you kind of talked about, I think the best have a good way of of merging the two of them. But to close it out, I wanted to talk about uh, a really unique cause that uh, you have going on. And, and it's one thing to have a shirt with your name on it, my friend, but another one when yeah. some proceeds of that shirt go to a really, really sweet cause to so talk about, I'm going to just set you up. I'm going to tee it up for you. I want you to take it from there. Talk about your background and why this project has been important to you. Yeah. So I, I appreciate you for letting me, letting me do that. I um have been so blessed throughout my life. So I uh, was adopted from Texas. Um, my birth mom gave birth me at the age of 15 um obviously wasn't the best situation so I was put up for adoption and I was blessed enough to be put into a tremendous family and surrounded by so much support and and things of that nature so um as I grew older I, I started to understand that more and um yeah. I decided I wanted to do something to give back and you know shine more light on adoption and and the success it can have so I you know, hit up a company and decided to come out with some t-shirts. I've always had that nickname, Big Play Trey, for a while. So yep. it seemed right at the time and and whatever. So we we came out with it. And honestly, it it, it took off. But so many teammates and, and friends and families bought it and reached out to me. So it, it proved how much I'm blessed, even like more than I originally thought, honestly. So um, I, we're over like 200 shirt sales at this That's point awesome. and, and raised a good amount of money. So um, it's, it's going really well. That's awesome, man. And make it 201 after this episode. I got to get in on that, but, oh, um, that, that it really is. That's a special deal. And when you find ways for guys at our level to do that, uh, in the grand scheme of things, like, is it going to solve all the world's problems? No, but it's like this kind of moment and this kind of personal connection that, and you know, that fulfillment that I'm sure you get from doing this and, you know, trying to make that impact. Has it inspired some of the guys on the team and, and maybe even some of the guys in the conference to try and go out and, and do things of that sort? Yeah, I've seen, um, there's been a few, um, like foundation type stuff people have supported and, uh, like my teammates have bought a bunch of shirts. So it, it's always cool. when like, I show up to like a team dinner or something and there's like eight dudes wearing the t-shirt <laughs> and sweet. they'll put it on, right. They'll put on their Snapchat story and stuff. And then someone's going to ask them, Oh, what's a t-shirt for? Then they, ex they can explain yep. it perfectly to whoever. So it's, it's truly special, honestly. So I appreciate you asking and, and letting me talk about it. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'd be remiss if I if I didn't. But uh, some big game games coming up for you guys yeah. down the stretch here. Still uh, not out of the woods quite yet. The woods being right. the freaking whack that we talk yeah. about. What's the right. mindset like in that locker room and the attitude moving forward? Right, like I said before, there's 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 no easy game, so we don't want to take anyone lightly because you never know who can beat who and what will happen at the end of the year. So we're going to focus on Stevens Point this weekend and 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 build off them and keep going. Hopefully, finish off the year undefeated still a, a lot of football to be played down there huh yeah yes there is
I love to see it, man. Hopefully, we can uh, continue to cover your guys. And you know what? Maybe if the if the stars align and the, and the cards and the cookie crumbles the way it does, see you guys in person at some point down the road. Yeah, that would be that really would be incredible. Awesome. But um, Trey, I really thank you, my man. This has been this has been great. I'm glad we finally got to have you on the show, brother. Yeah, it's 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 thank you for letting me come on, and thank you for also all the coverage you do for D2 and, and D3 sports. We really appreciate it. Thank you, my man. Have a good rest of your night. It means a lot. We'll be